What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with some of the most overpowered and broken things in this game. From Warframe abilities, interactions between weapon, Warframes, and helmet abilities, and just some busted weapons. Most of the things that do work and deal crazy damage are intended for the most part. Hopefully for the people who underestimated these things will be surprised to see how good these things are. This list will be in no particular order, but of course I'll save the best for last. But if you think I missed some epic ones, or if you have any cool interactions, synergies, and overpowered things that don't make you fall asleep while performing them, Octavia... <coughs> Please do share them in the comments section below. But before we get into this video, a quick word from today's sponsor. I would like to thank today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is an awesome free-to-play turn-based tactical RPG with a bunch of champions you collect and upgrade to crush your enemies. Feel free to use my links below in the description or scan my QR code. Personally, I enjoy the different and unique character designs that give you an epic vibe to your gameplay. If you want to engage in some epic battles, you should see some of the toughest boss fights in the game, like the Ice Golem, Demon Lord, and Hydra. Then fight your way up there and encounter one of my favorite boss fights, the Hydra. It has many heads, and each head is an entirely different battle on its own with unique mechanics. Hope you're ready for that. So download on Android and iOS or PC. This month, Raid has introduced a new event called the Path of Light. You'll be able to explore three paths to get the rewards you want, and there's a new set of skins for the amazing Trunda Guilt Mallet. There's seriously never been a better time to get started, and if you use my link or scan the QR code right here, new players get a free starter pack worth almost $30 to kickstart your game. We're talking about a free champion, Tyrell, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. And you can grab all of these right here. But wait, there's more. Raid's currently running a special Deliana chase event where new and existing players can get their hands on the amazing Deliana brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days. And for new players, once you're in game, enter the promo code MYDELIANA to get 50 XP brews to max your legendary hero Deliana to 50, as well as a ton of silver. Easy as that. I'll catch you there. Alright, let's start off with the first one. Zephyr's Tornadoes. They are one of the most broken things in this game. They can adapt elemental and physical damage that you can inflict to it and deal it to the enemies that are captured within it. And 100% of all of that damage dealt will be distributed along with critical hits and status effects from your weapons. And the critical damage that is dealt to the enemies is then multiplied by 200%. Moving on to the next one, the Glaive Prime. It's an explosive thrown melee that you can detonate when thrown and deal AoE explosions and bleed enemies. And thanks to mods like Volatile Quick Return, you can increase the blast radius and increasing its chances to explode. This weapon can easily scale into the level 9000s and still shred the enemies. Rivenless. Sticking with stupidly broken weapons, the Kuva Friggin' Brahma. It's an AOA explosive bow and arrow, killing everything in sight without the need to reload. Just, just think about that. All right, now onto Baruch's Serene Storm. Baruch's fourth ability is the strongest exalted weapon in the game and has various ways to scale and damage. Being a melee weapon, it has access to combo multipliers. So at 12 times combo, you gain a 3.75 times damage multiplier. It also happens to be one of the two exalted melees that can hit red crits fairly easily. The reactive storm augment increases the status chance of the fourth ability. The impact damage that it deals will adapt to the enemy's weaknesses, and it can be modded for either a combo or heavy attack loadout, or even both. It can one-shot acolytes and even high-level demolist units. And while active, you gain a 40% damage reduction, which complements other damage reduction stats. Not to mention, it doesn't rely on energy, and it can remain active indefinitely. The waves from its fists have their own instance of damage, and have body and terrain punch through. Oh yeah. 
While we're on the topic of exalteds, how about the most powerful pseudo exalted weapon that completely destroys everything? Korra's Whip Claw. The Whip Claw has its own stats. It has a lot of ways to scale and damage. The augment that increases the Whip Claw's base damage to 350%, melee equip mods, power strength, and combo multipliers. When I talk about melee equipped mods, this is when we use a stat stick. For those who don't know, a stat stick is a melee weapon, but not used as a traditional melee weapon, but as a vessel to carry mods so that it will increase your damage output on a Warframe's melee ability. Meaning, the weapon stats do not matter, just the mods, because you're actually modding the ability rather than the equipped melee. So any melee weapon works, except combo pausing melees, for example the Zorus, as those will reset your combo count buildup. And why is combo so important? Because all pseudo and regular exalted weapons scale off combo multipliers, giving them that 3.75 times damage multiplier at 12 times combo. The whip claw can wipe rooms, destroy Eximus and Acolytes with ease. Now one of the best survivabilities in game, shield gating. Shield gating is a passive that's available on all of your Warframes that have shields. Doesn't matter how much, they just need to have shields. So the damage that would usually and completely one-shot you will be stopped by your shields, and that damage will be prevented going to your health, just as the name entails. Shield gate. So if your shields break, you have a 1.3 seconds of damage negation to everything except Toxin, because Toxin bypasses shield. While the shields are recharging, meaning not fully regenerated, and they break again, you will only get a 0.33 seconds of damage negation. So lowering your shield value by using a decaying dragon key makes it easier to replenish your shields, because the lower the shields are, the sooner they recharge. So you end up getting the entire 1. 1.3 seconds of damage negation. This is easily done by using mods like the Augur Set and Brief Respite, or any abilities that regenerate your shields. And to give you a longer instance of survivability, you can equip Rolling Guard for 3 seconds of invulnerability to all damage, to engage or disengage to help you reposition yourself and also cleanses you of status effects, especially if you get affected by Toxin DOTs. No matter how much you deny it, this method gives you a lot more survivability than a pile of sand that turns into a coffin. Moving on to Volt's Shields. They are a great defensive and offensive tool. When cast, it will block any incoming damage that is aimed at you and increases your outgoing damage in the form of increased crit damage and electric damage. You can stack six shields on top of each other and the electric bonus adds onto itself. However, the critical multiplier will remain at 200% and will not increase. The electric damage buff is somewhat similar to how it coats weapons with electric elemental damage, like Toxic Lash from Saren, but only when you fire through the shields. The electric damage bonus is additive to your weapon's base damage and doesn't combine with other combined or singular elements, so it's a separate instance of electric damage. The critical damage bonus when firing through the shields takes your modded crit damage and doubles it, and the bonuses are granted to guns, amps from operators, exalted weapons that can shoot through the shields and of course, Exotic Contagion. However, not the Glaive. You can also pick up your shields and move around with it, but you'll be forced into your secondary weapon, and your shield will shrink in size. And while moving around while the shield is equipped, will drain your energy every 4 meters. And this is also affected with efficiency mods. Alright, this is the final one, and I'm not sure when this will be patched because it is something fierce. Chroma's Elemental, Ward, Damage Reflection, and Zanta's Whisper's Bullet Attractor Interaction, allowing you to deal insane amounts of damage. When using this, you can't have Vex Armor along with Zanta's Whisper, so you have to replace his third ability. TLDR, Bullet Attractors and Reflected Damage share the same principles. Damage done by the Bullet Attractor will be amplified by the Damage Reflection Multiplier of Elemental Ward, and this Damage Multiplier 
ends up being a final weapon damage multiplier, similar to Eclipse, but with no lighting issue. Let me explain this a bit. The Cold Elemental Ward has two buffs, Armor and Damage Reflection. The Damage Reflection has a multiplier and status chance. This multiplier only applies to the projectile weapon damage reflected from enemies attacks and the redirect damage is based off of your element on the ward so always hold now for the bullet attractor and the one that we'll be using is zata's whisper L bullet attractors like mag's bubble and zata's whisper have similar effects when you shoot a projectile it will create a bubble and the projectile will orbit around the enemy however hit scan bullets do not orbit the enemy the shots will mark an area and force all of the remaining shots to always be redirected to that area that was shot first no matter where you shoot into the bubble afterwards for example if you land a headshot first the whole bullet attractor bubble is then turned into a huge headshot marker now this is where it gets a bit crazy. The weapon must be hit scan, otherwise the damage is just going to be diminished. And the elemental ward will turn all the damage into cold damage and nothing you can do about it. So we'll build on that and we'll go with full raw base damage, crits and the cold elemental damage multiplier and have fun one shotting everything in sight. Dystopia and Asian Invasion have taken this loanout into level cap disruption. Anyway, these are some of the most deadly and over powered things in Warframe. If you have some more that I haven't mentioned or would like to share with the community, please leave them down in the comments section. Anyway, for those who've enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe. For more Warframe content, streams, and so much more, do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more, and as always, peace.